I call the honourable member for Warringah. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. There is a deep concern for animal welfare and safety amongst Warringah residents. This includes concern for the welfare of animals being shipped overseas as live exports. I have consistently said that it is our moral and ethical responsibility to bring an end to live animal exports. The science and research on the issues in the live animal trade is clear, showing the devastating impact on these animals. Our live export industry has consistently shown its willingness to condemn animals to extreme risk of suffering and death in the harshest of conditions. And with temperatures ever rising during summer periods due to the climate crisis, we are already seeing examples from overseas where there are mass deaths of animals being transported in sweltering conditions. For example, in the UK during their summer in 2022, some 18,500 chickens died in transport compared to 325 in the same period the previous year. It's clear the conditions are changing and so much must also the regulations and laws. I commend the efforts of the independent member for Clark and others in this place who have kept advocating for an end to live animal exports. As I've said before, the standard you walk past is the standard you accept. This is an issue we have walked past for too long. It's also an issue that's been on the agenda for some time. So whilst I appreciate for many communities uh, there is a concern, and I'll go to that in a moment, this is not a new development. This has been on the cards for some time. In the UK just last month, a new law came into effect banning the export of live animals, including their cattle, sheep and pigs for slaughter. New Zealand brought in a live animal export ban by sea into effect in April 2023. And so now Australia is beginning to catch up. We have a proposed law for, before us to stop the export of live sheep from Australia. Now, let's be clear, it's not coming to effect immediately. It, is, it has a, uh, a timing, a long lead time uh, for that adaptation to occur. So, Australia's uh, lamb and mutton export industry was worth some $4.5 billion uh, last year. But live sheep exports by sea was, in fact, less than $77 million in 2023, so about 0.1 per cent of Australia's agricultural production. Historically, we've supplied a large volume of live sheep to Middle Eastern countries, peaking at around $415 million over two decades ago. The overall volume of live sheep exports by sea has been decreasing steadily over the last two decades, dropping by 27 per cent between 2018 and 2019 and then again in 2022-2023. And over the last two decades, our sheep meat exports have grown by over 300 per cent in value. So that is process, not live animals, including exports to the North Africa and Middle Eastern region more than tripling in those situations in value over this period. This means there is a market for processed meats and there are more jobs in the meat processing and slaughter industry available to Australians. That is where the opportunity lies. Western Australia has been Australia's only source of live sheep exports by sea since 2019-2020. It now directly employs less than 100 people, but I do appreciate there are communities and farms where it's a long family tradition that will be uh, significantly impact. So it does set the scene, though, when we appreciate the constantly decreasing uh, size of this uh, industry and when we start appreciating the growth in the processed meat industry, we can see where the opportunity is to combine economic opportunity, jobs opportunity and ethical and moral opportunity to stop uh, the, this inhumane treatment of animals. So, the government has commissioned an independent report into the phase-out of live sheep exports by sea, which reported back in October last year. And that report acknowledged, acknowledged the polarised feeling with the community on this issue of live export bans, in particular from those Western Australian communities. However, the review panel concluded that the WA sheep industry can remain viable and sustainable following a live export ban, provided there is appropriate government support. And that's what this bill puts into effect. It bans live exports of sheep by sea and provides support to those who will be affected by this change. I appreciate, again, there is debate and discussion um, in relation to the uh, appropriateness of the support proposed by the government and whether or not this is adequate. 
It is important to be clear, though, that it does not ban all live animal exports. Live sheep exports by air will continue, exports of other animals will continue by sea and or air, including live cattle. Following the passage of this bill, sheep producers, related businesses and markets have a clear time frame of four years to manage the transition from the trade into new activities. This is not like they're getting the rug pulled out from underneath them. There is a four-year transition period. This bill does provide a certain support to the affected stakeholders. The $107 million proposed transition support package will be necessary to assist all parts of the sheep industry supply chain, from farmers to truck drivers to shearers and meat processors, to adjust to that future without live sheep exports. I do hear, though, the concern in relation to the size of that transition package, that it does not seem to be adequate when one considers uh, the size of what is being lost and the amount of areas that need to be covered in that site in that extent. Um, the industry was valued at around $77 million in 2022-2023, so we should have a package from the government that ultimately helps create new opportunities to grow the domestic sheep processing industry, grow local jobs and contribute to regional development. Already, the sheep meat export industry is worth some $4.5 billion, so it clearly has that potential to take over and, take, um, and, and assist these communities in the transition. So I support this bill, but it is worth raising sensible issues it presents. First, firstly, as I mentioned, questioning the size of the support package at $107 million over five years. And I would encourage the government to be open-minded on whether further support will be needed to properly address the transition. Within the $107 million, the government has committed some $64 million over five years for supporting sheep producers and supply chain participants affected. Now, if you start dividing that over the course of those five years, it really does highlight it is not a big support package. And so that really needs to be the focus of the government. This involves providing funding for more rural financial counsellors, expanding domestic sheep meat processing capacities and developing plans to help businesses reorient their operations away from live exports. Now, we, I understand in, in WA, where 85 to 90 per cent of exports origin, originate, the Premier has said that the ban of live sheep export would cost the relevant industries up to $123 million per year implying that the government's $64 million over five years might be less than one-tenth of what is in fact needed. The government has also allocated some $27 million in funding over five years again to enhance demand for Australian sheep products in interstate and international markets. But this is unlikely to stretch far enough, given the diversity and unique needs of the various international markets. Again, we all know how to divide by five, and so just announcing a number over to be a measure, a package over the course of five years does not in itself make it a significant package. So when we divide that up over the course of five years, it's clear there is some for, the, the package falls short in many areas. I, do, I also remain concerned that the live sheep export trade will continue in its current form for another four years without any caps or quotas and with only existing regulations in place. And unfortunately, all too often, we know those regula regulations are in inadequate and insufficient. So I would strongly encourage the government to reconsider the lack of caps and quotas over the next four years and instead implement measures to achieve a gradual phase-out of live sheep exports over these less next four years. The existing regulations that apply to live sheep exports appear to be inadequate given the cases of inhumane treatment of sheep on chips seen as recently as January this year. And we should be considering the live exports of cattle as well. I acknowledge that live cattle export market is worth some $1.2 billion in the 2022-23 year, and there are much greater economic consequences of banning live export of cattle by sea. But the government should still consider further what it can do to improve the welfare of cattle being exported overseas by ship. In many cases, cattle and sheep are transported on the same ships, and in March this year, more than 100 Australian cattle died on a live export ship to Indonesia, one of the highest mortality rates ever reported on an Australian live cattle ship shipment. The government should be considering further measures to ensure welfare of 
live cattle and all live animal exports uh, to ensure that there isn't the inhumane treatment of animal occurring. Examples uh, that have been proposed include mandating vets on all cattle shipments, as recommended by the okay. RSPCA, or installing real-time monitoring systems to track cattle conditions, such as temperature, humidity and health indicators. Live cattle exporters should be required to plan optimal routes to re re reduce stress and health risks and avoid transport during extreme weather conditions. So I, I will support this bill. It's a good start, but it's clear there's a lot more work to be done to balance, on one hand, animal safety and cruelty and the welfare of animals within live export industries, but particularly uh, the growing and increasing challenge from heat that we are going to see as the world warms with the climate crisis. On the other hand, I absolutely support transition packages to ensure communities that are being asked to change uh, can do so with the support of packages by government that adequately meet the needs that they face.